So in today's lab, we will discuss about the uh, MATLAB codes uh, for Newton, Newton's divided difference. Newton's divided difference interpolating polynomial interpolating polynomial okay and uh, also the MATLAB code for Lagrange polynomial okay. Lagrange polynomial So these two things we will cover today. Okay. So can you see this? Uh, what uh, what I have what I have typed, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so let's suppose we take a, a data. Uh, suppose, hello. hello. So suppose we have this data, uh, and then let me. Apply. This is for the uh, Newton divided uh, difference. Okay. Okay. First, take this uh, uh, this right hand side. Okay. So, for example, if we have this data, x is equal to zero, one point five, two point eight, four point four, six point one, and eight, and y is equal to uh, this data. So we can create a divided difference table. So you 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 know that how to create this divided difference table. So you take for example uh, for this 0 0.6 value is uh, basically if I just input over here. So you can see that this divided difference table is uh, this 0 0.9 minus 0 this value uh, divided by 1.5 minus 0 uh, this value. Okay. And uh, then this value over here is the difference, divided difference of these two values. Similarly, in the uh, second order, in the second column, you can see that uh, this divided difference is, uh, this is the divided difference of these two values, but in the X, this is the divided, uh, divided differences from here to here, okay? So in this way, then you can create this uh, divided difference table. So in very uh, in Excel, you can create this divided difference table. Okay, and uh, uh, then, uh, for example, once you create this divided difference table, so the entries in this first row, the entries in this first row, are your coefficients. Okay. They are their coefficient. Uh, they are the coefficient. So this is the uh, if the Newton's polynomial. If you will say Newton's polynomial, uh, so we say that is uh, y in terms of x. So uh, if these uh, coefficients are so, for example, if these coefficients are a naught, a naught. A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5 in this case. So, uh, so the Newton's uh, polynomial will be A0 plus A1 times, okay, A1 times X minus X0. Right. So where uh, where where, uh, where is x naught is here? So this is x naught, x one, x one, x two, x three, x four, x five. Okay. So these are the x values, okay? And then the uh, the next coefficient will be uh, will be what? 
it will be the next term will be a2 times x minus x naught okay, times x minus x1. Okay, this will be the term. And similarly, the third term will be uh, a3 times x minus x naught times x minus x1 times x minus x2. Okay, and so on. Okay, so you will, the first term will be a naught and then the second term will be this, will be this, third term will be this, fourth term will be this. And then you will, if you will add them together, so that will be the uh, Newton's uh, interpolating polynomial from the divided difference table. Okay, so by using this, then we can interpolate the uh, values. So for example, if I want to interpolate the value at x is equal to uh, 2.5, so what I can do is I can first uh, we all because I already have the a naught a one a two a three a four a five already calculated. So what I have to calculate over here is x minus x naught, x minus x naught times x minus x one, x minus x naught times like that. So in this case, what I can do is I can put x which is two point five and minus x naught. Uh, sorry, x is uh, not 2.5, x is, uh, let me see. I'm taking the value of x at, x is equal to, uh, say, 2.8, okay. Yeah, we can take any value, just, uh, just for example, I'm taking x, the value of x as x x is equal to 2.8. So f at x is equal to 2.8. So I will calculate first the x minus x naught. So uh, x minus x naught. So x was 2.8. So I can just put 2.8 minus x naught. x naught is here, this value. Okay, so the next term is x minus x naught times x minus x naught, uh, x minus one. So the next term is uh, this term multiplied by x minus x one. So x is 2.8 minus x1 is 1.5, okay? So it is 3.64. And the next term is this previous term multiplied by x minus x2. So x is 2.8 and minus x2 is 2.8 also. So here it will be zero. So by this, I think the, all the next, uh, all the other terms will be zero, okay, in this case. Because we just have, we are just actually interpolating the value which is already given. Okay, so we can take any values, but if you take any other value, for example, which is not the given value, so there will be some uh, factors over here, but all the other terms now are zero. So uh, now you can calculate the value of y of uh, uh, 2.8. Okay, value of y at x is equal to 2.8. So you can calculate it from here. Maybe I can just place this value over here. So this is the value, uh, which is the uh, equal to A naught. Okay, A naught is here, which is basically the first term plus uh, this uh, A1, uh, A1 times uh, this term which we already have calculated, okay? And plus this term multiplied by 3.64, which we have already calculated. And the all the other values will be zero because uh, that is zero. So we don't need to add it over here. So in this case, the value uh, which we will get over here, it will be 2.5. So which is of course, we already know, okay? 
So this is just uh, for you. Uh, just I just chose this value to just to illustrate that uh, the interpolating coefficient uh, polynomial which we have calculated has been correctly uh, determined. Okay. So this is uh, two point five. Okay, so we know that the answer is 2.5. Okay, so now later on we will do it with the uh, MATLAB and then we should get the same answer. Okay, uh, in MATLAB, this divided difference table will be calculated in a slightly uh, different way. Okay, uh, in the in the divide uh, in the MATLAB, I am uh, calculating the divided difference like this way. Okay. So for example, we have these X and Y values, okay? And the first divided difference will be placed here. It will not be placed here, okay? So it will be placed in the second row. And then uh, what is this divided difference? It is the same. Formulation is the same, okay? This minus this value divided by this minus this value, okay? Why? minus y1 is equal to x2 minus x1 or y1 minus y0 is equal to x1 minus x0. Okay. And similarly, the second one is like this. So in the second one is like this. And in the second, the second divided difference, the values are like this. And here you can see that. So now what, uh, what is the difference which we got in this table? or in this table can you can you just see what is the difference yeah can can someone answer uh, what i have asked so what is the difference between these two tables hello i'm um, sorry what it's like yeah. just inverted somehow. Uh, other things are the same. Yeah, everything is same actually. Only thing is that the coefficients which we have got over here are now in this uh, diagonal elements. Yeah, that we got the same coefficients as here. We are we are interested in these coefficients, but uh, here we got it in the first row. But here in this case, we have got the same coefficients, but in the, on the diagonal places, okay? So this is the um, only difference. So, uh, the process is the same, like exactly the same, yes? Yes, it's the same, yeah. But only thing okay, is that, no... the, yeah, only oh, thing sorry. is that the placement is different. Ah, oh, okay. So there is no like difference if it will be, if we will run the script like using the matlab and the same. Yes. So because I will be using this table in the MATLAB script, so that's why I have introduced it here first into the Excel, okay? And then oh, okay. of course we can use it. So now I move to the MATLAB, okay? So in the MATLAB, let me uh, create the table, uh, sorry, the code. So I start the code with the, um, with, the uh, with entering the data, okay? So for example, if I want to enter the data, so X values are given as uh, zero, uh, 1.5, 2.8, 4.4, uh, 6.1, and eight. So we have taken these X values, okay? which are the same as before, 0, 1.5, 2.8, 4.4, 6.1, and 8. Yeah, right? And then I will enter the Y values, okay? Y values, so 0 0.9, 0, uh, 0, and then 0 0.9, 2.5, Six point six, seven point seven, eight. Okay. So yeah, here we have this. So 
So there are how many values in X? One, two, three, four, five, six values in X. One, two, three, four, five, six values in Y. Okay, so the next uh, uh, step will be uh, to find the uh, length of this matrix. That means the number of elements in this matrix. So for this, uh, this I will uh, store it in a variable named X. So for this, I will use the length function in MATLAB. So length is a MATLAB function, which counts the number of elements in the matrix. So uh, we can count the number of elements in either X or Y because both should be same. So this will give us a value of uh, five. So M is M will be equal to five. So M in fact is the number of data points. Uh, sorry, M will be uh, six actually in this case. M are the number of data points. So basically we find, we want to uh, tell that uh, how many data points we are, we are in, in fact, in this case, we are telling the MATLAB that how many data points which we want to use. Okay, M is equal to length of X. And then we also will tell uh, the uh, MATLAB that uh, how many, uh, what degree of polynomial uh, we want to, uh, we want to uh, generate. So, so, so from some M data points, uh, we can generate a maximum of like uh, M minus one degree polynomial. So for example, if we have five data points, we can generate a fourth order polynomial. So we can even generate even less polynomial, but let's say we generate uh, uh, one less uh, polynomial, the maximum possible uh, degree polynomial, which we can generate, okay? So in this case, uh, we ha I have uh, specified these values. Okay, so the next step in this case is uh, to uh, generate uh, a way uh, to generate a, a an array or the matrix for zeros okay, zeros uh, with m rows and m columns okay so uh, i think uh, this will be uh, generating of this uh, uh, will be useful because uh, uh, Later on, we will be needing uh, these rows. So dy is equal to zeros m by m. So this generates the, uh, this will generate the six by so, uh, six, six by six zero matrix. Okay, six by six zero matrix. So for this six by six zero matrix, uh, I want to assign the first. Okay, wh why do we need this six by six zero matrix? Uh, you, need, you see that in this Excel, in uh, in Excel over here, uh, what I have over here is these values. So uh, what I want to generate is this matrix over here. So this is a six by six matrix, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So uh, of course here are some, uh, here there are no values. So in the, uh, for the data, which will be generated by MATLAB, uh, there will be uh, zero values only. So, uh, so if you are wondering why I am creating the zero by zero matrix, so I am initializing it uh, with zeros. That that means I have just uh, I know that I ne need to create the six by six matrix, but at the for the beginning, all the values will be zero. Okay, all the values will be zero. So that's why I generated a zero over here, and then. Uh, and then we are, and then I also know that the first column of this matrix is Y values, right? The first column of this matrix is Y values. So therefore we, I don't have to do any extra calculations for the first column. So I can just uh, 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 specify the first column by this command. Uh, the colon symbol, then comma, and then one is for the uh, number of columns. So, so colon colon will show that it will take all value, it will take all rows of uh, this dy matrix, 
and then only the first column okay and then i will assign it assign uh, assign this as y and then i will assign this as y okay so it will be like that so uh, this one is the so for example if i want to put a comment over here this is the place holder for the uh, generated uh, m by m matrix of coefficients Okay. divided different coefficients okay and uh, for this i think uh, this is the first first column okay okay because i don't want to spend much time over here explaining so many things i hope it's understandable to you uh, then uh, what i want to do is so just we did in the uh, excel so we generated this uh, table first so the same thing I will do. I will generate this table. But remember that the values of the uh, I will generate this table. Okay. So, so for generating this table, I need to apply uh, loops. So the first four uh, I will apply two for loops. So for uh, uh, some j is equal to. Uh, one to n to uh, these are the these are the two nested for loops j is equal to one to n and then for uh, i is equal to uh, j plus one and n plus one okay so j plus one to n plus one so here, this will be the main formula, okay? dy i j plus one will be equal to uh, dy i j minus dy j j divided by x i minus x j and then bracket close okay so in this case i think there is some error over here uh, because there is this small red or something invalid syntax it might be missing a closing parenthesis okay so let me see where i am missing is closing parenthesis dy i and this is the i okay i j plus one okay this will be uh, dy i j plus one is equal to dy uh, i j minus dy j j yeah so this is uh, uh, this has to be uh, this uh, that is this value this whole value should be subtracted by this value okay so therefore it should be there should be there should be one more parenthesis over here and still it shows some error uh, dy i j minus dy j j and then it is x i minus x j hmm. so let me say it again dy i j plus i comma j plus one is equal to dy uh, i j minus dy 
जे जे एंड डिवाइडेड बाय या आई थिंक दिस ब्रैकेट इज ए डिवाइड बाय एक्स आई या एक्स आई या दिस इज एक्स्ट्रा ब्रैकेट एक्स आई यस नाउ the error has been removed okay and then end and then end okay so remember that i have used two nested loops uh for example the first uh, j loop uh here j is equal to r1 to n is the outer loop and it controls the table columns and the inner i loop is the uh inner and it controls the differences corresponding to the general formula for the divided difference okay so corresponding to this general formula for the divided so this performs the calculations and the outer loop places the uh, values at the various places okay so in this way then uh, what i will generate is i will generate this dy that table okay so maybe i can save it i can save uh, newton divided difference uh, lab okay newton divided difference lab save and let me generate uh, let me uh, run it okay so i run it and then i can see that the values have been generated over here so you can see that the values have been generated uh, like in this format which we uh, showed it showed in the excel okay so this table has been generated so from so from now from this table we have to get this answer okay so for this we have to interpolate it okay and then for interpolation we have to uh, multiply these with these uh, different coefficients so uh i we uh, we can further uh, modify this uh, code and in that case we will start from the given value of x so let's say the given value of x is xp is equal to uh whatever value which i want to give so it can you can say that input uh input that is enter x right so input enter x so maybe close it so by uh, putting this input command then uh, it will if i will uh, execute this so it will ask me for the value of x so maybe i can put the value of x which i want maybe 2.5 okay of course uh, i i have not done anything for the calculation of the value of x so it will just generate this divided difference table okay so that is the that is just for the input of the uh, value of x uh in this case now what i can do is now because now here i have generated this uh, uh, table of the coefficients so now what i can do is now i want uh, to use this value of the dy uh, for calculation of the value of y so yp so i can say that y p that is the y uh, polynomial or y predicted whatever you want to say so it will be dy uh, 1 1 why it is dy 1 1 uh, remember that dy is this matrix and uh, its uh, value in the first row and the first column is 0 this is the value of the first term uh, this is the value of the first term you know of the polynomial okay the first the value of the, in the first term of the polynomial is here okay in over here is it's here so this is the first so therefore we have initialized uh, the value of uh, y okay 
So we have initialize, and then later on we will add the other values. So the next value is this. And then for generating the other values, we have to uh, uh, add two or more loops. Okay, so these two, two, two loops have already generated this table. The other two loops will now add uh, these uh, value, multiply those uh, coefficients with the corresponding uh, uh, x minus x naught terms and then add them together. Okay. So for this, I will generate a for loop. So for i is equal to uh, 1 to n and uh, I will first create an initializing value for the product. Okay. Because the remaining values are now the products. Okay. If, if you see over here, the remaining values are now the product a one times this term, this product. So I will gradually add these product values. Okay. So first I will take the product values and then I will add these values. So x product is equal to one. So I will initialize the product from one. And then uh, for uh, j is equal to uh, 1 to i. That is i, the value of i, it will take from the outer loop and this value it will be used. And here the values will be uh, calculated. So x prod uh, will be equal to what will be the product. So from the initial product value, which is a, a 1 times uh, xp which is the given value minus the xi that is the current value sorry xj xj that is the current value okay, because this is uh, this for loop is for the j okay and uh, then that's it so this will be the uh, product okay and then we will end this loop and then uh, when uh, when we come out of this loop for this uh, uh, the outside is the sum loop so that will be yp the updated value of the yp will be the previous value of yp plus uh, x prod value that means the previously product value that has to be multiplied by the uh, dy okay multiplied by the uh, appropriate uh, term in dy and that dy, dy will be the uh, diagonal terms okay so the diagonal term in this case will be i plus one comma i plus one okay we will, why we are taking i uh, not i i but uh, but i plus one because i is equal to one we have already considered it for the first value so i plus 1 and i plus 1. So these are the diagonal terms. And then it will be added. And then we will end this loop. And then finally we will display the answer. Okay, display uh, y is equal to and then display yp display yp so hope if everything has been added correctly then this uh, script should work okay so uh, okay i clear everything and then i run this so it's asking me for the value of x so earlier we have tested it for the value of x is equal to 2.8 and now the y is calculated as 2.8 which is the same answer as we got before in the Excel. Or similarly, if we want to calculate uh, for any value of say, for example, 4.4, uh, the answer should be 6.6, .6, okay? So let's uh, uh, say again, 4.4, the answer is, 6.6 or if for um, any value which is not known to us 
So for example, if we have a value between 1.5 and 2.8 is two. So for two, it should be between 0 0.9 and 2.5, okay? So for two, So it is about 1.2027. So that is of course the uh, predicted value. So in this way, you can uh, uh, you can generate this uh, uh, code for a Newton's uh, divided uh, difference interpolating polynomial. So uh, it's, it's a little bit uh, uh, difficult to uh, comprehend at first, but I think if you will practice it, and then you will see that how the uh, loops work, uh, then it will be easier for you to understand. So loop, uh, for example, uh, it is it becomes a little bit complicated to uh, comprehend if we are using the uh, nested loops, but. Uh, uh, but they, uh, they are, uh, these loops are, if employed uh, very, uh, if these loops are employed in the code, and then they are very uh, efficient. Okay, so this was the uh, Newton's uh, divided difference uh, script, which can be used. So for any data. So in this case, for now, if you have some other data, so you can input this data, and then hopefully this will generate the loop. Uh, on the other hand, if we for if for example, if we want if we, uh, in this case, uh, we have uh, cal done it for we have done it for like uh, uh, n is equal to m minus one, that is, uh, in this case, m was six, n will be five. So we have calculated the uh, fifth order polynomial. In this case, if we want that, if we just want the third order polynomial, so maybe we can put like uh, three over here. So if m is equal to six, m will be equal to three. So in this case, it will use only the uh, first four values. Okay, it will use only the first four values and then it will generate the um, table. Okay, so you can change it according to uh, what whatever you like it. Uh, remember that, okay, in the in this interpolation chapter, we uh, covered uh, two types of, uh, uh, two main types of interpolation. Okay, in the first part of this interpolation chapter, we covered the uh, Newton's divided difference and the Lagrange polynomial. So these two are essentially the same. Uh, the other type which we can cover was the supply and interpolation. Supply and interpolation, the mechanism for the calculation is entirely different over here. Okay. Uh, for the supply and interpolation, there are uh, inbuilt uh, uh, formulas in the MATLAB as well. Okay. And so for example, supply, uh, interp one we have used in some previous lab as well. So, Supply is something different, okay? In the supply, for example, uh, oh, supply is maxi uh, normally maximum for a third order polynomial, okay? But despite being at for the third order polynomial, splines are normally more accurate than the uh, very higher order polynomial, which we have done over here, okay? Which we have done over here as well. So, uh, you should be, uh, you should know the difference between these uh, different types of interpolation methods. Okay, and do you have any question regarding this? No, we don't. Okay, as usual, no question. Okay, that's fine, that is good. No question is good. Questions are if if uh, if questions they 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 are even better. No question is good, but questions are better, and more questions are best. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Okay, next is, uh, uh, as I told that uh, uh, the next part will be uh, Lagrange polynomial. Okay, Lagrange polynomial uh, uh, is uh, much simpler to uh, code in MATLAB compared with the Newton's divided difference. But uh, if you, for example, if you will do the calculation in Excel, uh, it is much easier to do with the uh, Newton's divided difference than with the Lagrange polynomial because in the Lagrange polynomial, if you see in if your textbook, the formulation is uh, uh, quite uh, uh, time consuming. So there are so many multiplication terms and then even if you will do it manually, then you have to add many terms over here and then calculate it. Or if even if you will do it on Excel, it is not that easy to comprehend it. But on MATLAB, on for, for the programming, it is much simpler to do compared with the uh, divided difference. Okay, so let's do the Lagrange, okay? method on Excel, on MATLAB. Okay. So for the Lagrange method, as you can see, okay, so just uh, have a, a brief uh, review of this Lagrange polynomial. So in, in the Lagrange polynomial, uh, just like you will have the values x0, x1, x2, x3, and then uh, fx0, fx1, fx3, y1, y2, y3, etc. So you can use these values and then you can rearrange these values in these terms, okay? And then you can directly find the values. So here in this case, if you will compare the Lagrange with the Newton's uh, interpolating difference, so you can see that in the uh, Newton's divided difference, you have to perform some calculations first, and then you can find the uh, coefficients. But here you can see that in the Lagrange coefficients, you can only, you can just directly input the raw data into these uh, equations, and then you can get the answers. So computationally, it gives you, uh, I mean, computationally from uh, from the computer's point of view, it is much simpler for the computer to do the Lagrange calculations than compared with the divided difference uh, calculation. Okay, so here you can see that uh, uh, for the uh, first order, the linear version of the Lagrange coefficients, there are two terms, f x naught and f x one, and their coefficients are like that. So for f x naught. Uh, you see, uh, you have the x terms over here in each of these. Uh, we have we have the x in each of these terms. Yeah, so x is the variable, okay, that we want to, uh, for which we want to find the interpolation. So x is the variable. So you will put the x over here, and then if it is x not over here, then the opposite, the other term, that is, if it is f, if if it is x not over here there is no x0 over here, okay? If it is x1 over here, there is no x1 over here. There, the other, there is the other term over here. And then if it is x1 over here, then x1 is same over here. If x1, x0 is over here in the denominator, it is x0 is over here. And then, uh, and then the remaining term is, of course, if it is x0 over here, then x0 is over here. If it is x1 over here, then fx1 is over here. Okay, so in this way, you can complete this uh, Lagrange polynomial. So for the second order, it's the, the same pattern continues. If xx0 is over here, so, but in the second pattern, you will have three terms, x0, x1, and x2. So we will start from x0, fx0, but if it is fx0 over here, then there is no x0 over here. So the other two terms will be here, x1 and x2. If x1 and x2 over here, those for the same x1 and x2 will be here at these places. 
And if x naught is over here, the same x naught will be in this denominator. And that's in this way, by this understanding, you can complete these terms over here. So, but the same thing which we are, which we, which is our mental understanding, we have to tell to MATLAB. Okay, so that we can do like this. Okay, so suppose we take this data, the same data over here. Um, this is the MATLAB which we did for the uh, Newton's divided difference. So suppose I take the same data. Okay, over here. And then we do, we try to do it with the Lagrange coefficients. I just, I'm just using the same data. Uh, the next is the uh, m is equal to length of x. Okay, m is equal to length of x. So that is the, that will find the number of elements in x and y matrices. Uh, the next is the, the next step is the yp is equal to uh, zero. What is y? The predicted value of y. Okay. So we will start from the predicted value of y of zero. And then from zero, uh, because that is the initializing value. And then we will use this yp variable uh, to further add on, add on some values. So after that, we will, I will apply a loop uh, for the addition of the values of y. So for uh, i is equal to one to m, that is the number of uh, data points, the number of data points, I will use uh, yp to add on the values of y. So yp is equal to uh, yp uh, plus uh, yi times the L. So this is the formula for the Lagrange coefficient. Okay, let me see, uh, let me show you uh, why this formula, is, formula comes over here. If you see this uh, uh, formula for the uh, Lagrange coefficient, so it is like this. It is the sum of the Lagrange L times the uh, value of Y. So it is the same formula which I have written over here, and then uh, sum we have I have summed it. So in in MATLAB terms, what is this formula is what this formula is. So I have initial yp value. In, I have initialized the yp value which is zero. Okay, for the starting, and then I have took the ith value of y ith value of y and then we multiplied it with the Lagrange uh, coefficients. So where will the ith value of y come? It will come from here. It will come from here. So this ith value of y, that is the val value of the function, will be multiplied by the Lagrange coefficient. But here we can see that I have not defined any Lagrange coefficient over here. So therefore, before that I have to uh, define the Lagrange coefficient. Okay, so I think that this Lagrange value should come, uh, Lagrange coefficient value should come before. Okay, so for for um, because the Lagrange coefficients are the multiplication factors, so for the start, this Lagrange coefficient will be one, and then it will be gradually calculated by the for loop. So for for uh, j is equal to uh, one to m. That is, uh, we will do it for m, uh, m times, because if you see that uh, over here in this Lagrange, if we have, uh, for example, for the linear case, we have we should have two data points. So that means we will use Lagrange coefficient two times. For the uh, quadratic case, we should have three data points. So we will use it for, we will do it for Three times. So therefore, uh, we will need uh, for as many Lagrange coefficients, as many La Lagrange coefficients as the number of data points. Okay. So data points here are m. So for j is equal to one to m, uh, l 
should be equal to L uh, times, L should be equal to L times uh, XP, and that is the uh, given value of P. Okay, so the given value of P uh, we need to specify. So for example, XP, that is the given value of P, okay? Uh, given value of P, I mean, we need to uh, specify. So for example, it is 2.5, okay, anyway. So it will be XP uh, minus uh, XJ, XP minus XJ uh, divided by uh, X, I minus X J and then bracket close. I'm sorry, yes. Professor. Yes. Why is it like XP minus XJ parenthesis J again? Or uh, this is I mistyped it. I put J two times. Sorry. Uh, also for the for loop. You have uh, written one equals one M. Is it, uh, I think it could be I equals one to M? Uh, yes, so for I, yeah, and then I mistyped it. Okay. So I is equal to uh, uh, one to M. Yeah, I mistyped it. And then uh, L is equal to one. So I should close it with semicolon. And for J is equal to, uh, one to m, and then l will be equal to l times x p minus uh, x j, and then divided by x i minus x j. Okay, but here I think uh, one thing is uh, we should be we should extra we have to provide it uh, because if we will take all the values of j in this case for for the calculation of l. There will be some situation where uh, J will be equal to I. So when J will be equal to I though, there will be in the denominator, there will be a zero value. Okay, so that uh, thing we have to avoid it. So for this, we will put a, um, if uh, J is uh, not equal to, okay, not equal to, if j is uh, not equal to uh, not equal to i, if j is not equal to i, only then we will calculate it. Okay, so only then we will calculate it. So if j is equal to uh, i, then we will skip it. Okay, then this will be skipped. Okay, so it will be end. And now this, okay. So hopefully it is uh, done. And then to further uh, complete it, uh, then we can say that uh, for uh, we can use XP as the input, okay. XP is equal to the input. Uh, in the parentheses, enter the value of XP. So then add the values of X, M, and YP is equal to zero, for I is equal to one to M, L is equal to one, for J is equal to one to M. If J is not equal to I, then we will calculate it. Okay, otherwise it will be skipped and end and then yp is equal to yp plus yi into l and then end. And then finally we have to display the result. Display the uh, results. Y is equal to and then display. So hopefully it is complete. Um, 
then I will save it. Leg, Lagrange, Lagrange Lab. So let me clear screen and then I need to uh, run it. You know, it is asking me the uh, value of the x. So uh, it is um, maybe I should put enter x is equal to okay. enter the value of x. Anyway, clear and then uh, Lagrange lab. Okay, now it's asking me the x value of x. So earlier we checked the same data where x is equal to 2.8. So the answer should be 2.5. So x is equal to 2.8. I entered. So the y was 2.5. And what was the other value? Um, for 4.4, it was 6.6. .6. Okay, so 4.4, it was 6.6. .6. So 4.4, it is, oh, sorry. Uh, run it again. So 4.4, it is 6.6. .6. So it means that the code works. But here you can see that uh, this code is much simpler. You see, this code is much simpler compared with the Newton's divided difference. Newton's divided difference code took uh, 22 lines, okay, and then four uh, uh, that means uh, four uh, total number of loops were four, okay. But here, the total number of loops were uh, two only, and then uh, one if statement simple. So it's much simpler to program compared with the Newton's divided difference. Okay. So, uh, do you have any question about this? Here we can also change the order, yes? The order of polynomial, if you want. Uh, the order of polynomial, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. So for example, in this case, uh, if we want to order, change the order of the polynomial, so um, here we can, yeah, for, for example, if we just want uh, changing the order of the polynomial, maybe we can just provide uh, the four, four points only so and then you can use this or uh, what you can do is you can introduce some more variables over here so for example uh, uh, we can say n is equal to length of x and then you can use n m is equal to n and then we can change the order of the polynomial as well yeah. so okay just like in the previous question right like in newton oh uh, yes Yes. So in the pre in the previous case, we can also, for example, uh, just uh, if we want to change the order of the polynomial. So for example, uh, we can add or delete some of the points from the data, and then accordingly we can calculate it. Yeah. Okay. So I have some questions over here. Oh, okay. So that is some other. Uh, uh, yeah, Tommy. Oh, okay. I have corrected it. So that's it. So okay. So later on, I I will share with these two quotes to you on Moodle as well. So that you can also practice your uh, questions uh, if you will have. And uh, so where are we now in the course? So we are into the last topic. So the tomorrow. And the, the next week I will cover the last topic. And you have assigned three assignments and three labs as well. Okay, uh, there should be a fourth assign uh, fourth assignment and the lab. But I think that will be uh, that I will do it in a slightly different way. Um, uh, fourth assignment and the lab. Uh, that uh, because earlier I asked you to. Uh, let me just 